Hello and welcome to Sign Health's mini series of three live stream events. Sign Health have fortunately received funding from the Home Office to produce these mini series. And the aim is to raise domestic abuse awareness. So this live stream has voiceover and captions and will be recorded throughout. The recording will then be uploaded to Sign Health's website. So if there's anything you've missed or you need a break from watching and you can come back and watch it later. Today is the third and final live stream event. And we will be introducing three guests to talk about their services for domestic abuse, for deaf domestic abuse victims or survivors. So for those that have seen the first and second episodes, or maybe you haven't seen them yet, they will all be uploaded later on. And I'll give you a summary of what happened. So in the first episode, we met three domestic abuse survivors who told us about their stories, their experiences, and what support they received. In the second episode, we met three representatives of different organisations who provide emergency support. So how you can contact emergency services, for example, using 999 BSL. And we spoke about the processes that, go, that you go through after contacting the police and how you might be supported to go to a refuge or a safe space. So tonight we will be asking another three guests and there will be a chance for question and answer. So if you're watching online and you have your own questions, you can text them in or you can upload a BSL video of up to one minute. So you can use WhatsApp to send in your questions and the number's just up here. Also, we do have a very special surprise for you today. And again, thank you for the funding from the Home Office for Sign Health um, who bid to create a mini film to raise awareness about domestic abuse. This is the first time this has ever been shown tonight. So I'll explain a little bit more about that later on. So now let's meet our first guest. Our first guest is called Vicky and she works for Sign Health. And she's the manager of the domestic abuse services. So we all know about Sign Health, but specifically the deaf domestic abuse service supporting deaf victims. So hello, welcome. Hello, it's nice to meet you. So we know of Sign Health. It's a really big organisation, but specifically the domestic abuse services, what do you offer? Well, we're a big service. We cover um, a wide range of people and services in the domestic abuse and deaf uh, community within England. And we support either face-to-face -face or remote. Brilliant. So is that just England you cover? You don't go Scotland or Wales or Ireland, is that right? Yeah, so yeah. can you explain a little bit more about what you provide? So we've got funding from the Home Office, which is why it provides um, services in England. Unfortunately, not Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. I hope one day in the future we can expand to the, all of the UK. Brilliant. So throughout the first and second episodes, we have spoken about the different support that Sign Health has offered victims and they've said they've been referred to Sign Health. So from that initial referral, how long might deaf people wait um, for the member of staff to contact um, from your team? Well, there's lots of different options you can to refer in. You can self-refer, you can have a professional or a family and friend, but we just need your consent to be referred into the service. Then once we've got uh, your referral, it can take 24 to 48 hours for us to then contact you back. We will look at your case and decide whether it's urgent or not, and then we will make contact with the person who made the referral, for example, the professional. We might say, who is the best person? It might be, okay, it's not safe to contact this person, so we need to contact somebody different, for example. 
We will also check your risk level to see if it's high priority and urgent and we need to get a caseworker in straight away. And we can do that to support you. But altogether, it can take about up to five to seven days to get a caseworker. Wow, that's really quick timescale then. So if there is a victim of domestic abuse, what might that person experience? What's their journey like to become a domestic abuse survivor? So how does your service support them through that journey? Well, really, this journey, like, it's not easy for a domestic abuse victim or survivor. They start with this referral in and we support them all the way to the end. Some people say, like, their situation, they, it might be quick. They might have contacted other organisations like court, solicitor, police. And so, obviously, it's their right to ask for support and get all our support. And we will continue to support you through all of that journey and obviously, once that whole journey has sort of finished, I suppose when you feel like you're free from abuse at that point, that's, that's great. You know, it's, it's a lot better for that person. Oh, that's really interesting. So obviously, we all know the deaf community is really small. And so people need to trust Sign Health and know that they'd be treated confidentially. Um, so how do you reassure victims to know that they can access their service safely? Well, of course, uh, the deaf community is full and people are worried, you know, the people in the team might know that person, but we have our own policies for confidentiality. It's, we're really strict and we follow these confidential policies to a T. We reassure the person. It doesn't matter if we um, know them. If there is a conflict of interest with them or the abusive partner or person, we may get a different caseworker or a different support worker in. There are other, other, sorry, there are other options available where we can put you to a refuge. We can use sign video support to contact refuge charity as well. Oh, that's really good. It's nice to know that the service is there. So you've explained really clearly about the journey to becoming a survivor of domestic abuse. And like you say, people might feel that they're free from the abuse. So at that point, do you kind of let go of that case or do you continue supporting? Well, really, it depends on their situation. We will make sure we've got a plan created with that person, like a safety plan to continue to support them in that aspect. And we will check that we've ticked off everything with them. We will review with them. Maybe when they feel ready to move on, we can have another discussion and feel like, okay, they're okay to go on independently and we can close the case. Or we may follow up, usually it's in six months, we can check how things have been going on. They may still be being abused. Or they may want to re-refer back into our service again. And that's completely all right. They can do that. Oh, that's really reassuring that that can happen. So for Sign Health's services, what do you think are the important aspects that people might need to be aware of? Well, our service is the only support service for deaf people. Deaf people face a variety of barriers in comparison to their hearing peers who can access deaf domestic abuse um, charities and support so simply there's nothing like that for deaf people apart from sign health we can provide reassurance it's definitely confidential we have a safe space where deaf people can go and get that support that they need so that's interesting so like you say hearing people might be able to access a service where they don't know so i'm just trying to imagine what it's like for someone who's experienced abuse and like you say, they might be experiencing kind of mind blank. How would you let people know that, you know, that you can support deaf victims? Well, we have domestic abuse navigators within our team, as well as caseworkers who go out and provide workshops to hearing um, people, professionals, different organizations so people know okay this support is there for deaf people within the deaf community because we provide the support and service for, with people or deaf people with who have experienced domestic abuse so we have that speciality we know the services that we provide and we want to make sure that others are aware we need to spread the word that we have this specialist service for deaf people oh lovely thank you so 
So now you've watched that explanation and you've got a lot of information, you might have some questions ready to send in. So the number is above again. So we have question and answer later on. You can send in your questions. So now we have our next guest, Emma, who works for Cambridgeshire Deaf Association. And her role is as an IDVA, an independent domestic violence advisor. So welcome. Thank you. So we were talking about Sign Health earlier as a really national organisation. So now let's focus in on CDA. You have domestic abuse services. What do you offer? So we are a really small um, charity and service and we support people within the Cambridgeshire area. We provide support for some people outside of that region, but predominantly within CDA or Cambridgeshire. So CDA offers support. We make sure people are suffering less. Brilliant. So that's only Cambridgeshire, but you say occasionally you might get contact from people just outside the area. So how might other people know if they're allowed to receive services from you? Thank you. That's a good point. So we've got Cambridgeshire region, but we might get a referral from the police for somebody who wants to move into Cambridgeshire because of the strong deaf connections within our region. We have some drop-ins as well around the edge of the region. So somebody may come along to them and show their interest, show that they might need support. So we have two IDVAs within the Cambridgeshire and then they might make contact. We can make contact within 24 hours to somebody who needs it. We can meet, we can either face to face or remotely can meet with those people. Wow. So that's really interesting. So again, we're talking about IDVA. Can you explain what that role means? So IDVA, so is basically we support people who have gone through domestic abuse. We create a plan with them to be able to flee the environment or if they want to remain, we can create a safety plan um, on how to best stay or best leave, whatever they want. We help them. We can contact the local services, for example, housing, social workers, and we have great strong connections within the region. They know us really, really well. So that's Brilliant. Ah, brilliant. So it means you might identify a domestic abuse victim or the police or other professionals might, and they might refer to CDA. So how long from that initial referral process um, would someone be able to receive that service? What sort of timescale? So within 24 hours, we make that initial contact. Unfortunately, if that is over a weekend, it will go over to Monday, the next working day. And we, so yes, we make contact within 24 hours. We have a phone call with them, see, okay, what support do we need to give within 48 hours? It could be a remote call. Oh, that's really interesting. So obviously remote, is that because Cambridge is quite a wide area, isn't it? And there's only two of you? Not really. It might be their situation. It might be quite serious. They might be at risk. So we want to offer remote services. I mean, if they want face to face, that's great. We can drive and meet them. Maybe somebody somewhere, sorry, within their local area where they feel risk free. Brilliant. So your service of CDA, again, supporting that victim to become a survivor. How does that journey look? Well, you know, a lot of the times these people are in fear. They're suffering from a lot of emotions. They don't know what to do. So we can support them with that. We can give emotional support. We can give advice. We can sit and have a chat. We never pressure anybody into anything. We give all the options, discuss those with them and see what they feel like they want to do. And often that can just share a weight off their shoulders. We try and create a great relationship from start to end and just continue to support through the journey. So potentially housing, court, contacting the police and yeah, until the end we're there. And often the deaf person feels a lot more confident in themselves and they don't need our support constantly. That's really interesting. So like you say, from that initial referral to CDA, like you say, deaf people might be worried about the community being really small and being in the same area in Cambridgeshire. So how do you make sure that the deaf survivors are trusting you? Well, we are strictly confidential. We have our own confidentiality po policies as well. Maybe the person doesn't want us to know who they are. It can stay confidential. That's completely fine. 
it's really important for their confidence and for their situation for them to feel comfortable. We need to match what they want, what their wishes are. We honour that. So we know that CDA have a good connection with local police, social workers and other services. So do you think that's really important for domestic abuse victims locally, that you've got good local connections and that you know the local services um, that are provided for hearing people? So can you explain a little bit more about how that reassures victims as well? Yeah, so we've got a great connection with the police. We've uh, taught deaf awareness. They know of us as well. If any deaf people sort of pop into the police station, they'll contact us. We've made sure that we can go along and provide support to the deaf person as well. We have brilliant deaf, deaf direct communication um, and like an IDFA, sometimes other people have been hearing and then we've had to have an interpreter and that doesn't work well. So for us, we are deaf IDVAs. So that means we're on the same level as the deaf person. We can provide the support. We can provide it in BSL. We can make sure that they're not suffering anymore. We can make sure that the support that they get is on the same level as hearing peers and, and people going through domestic violence. Brilliant. I'm sure that's really, really reassuring for people to know that service oh. is there. Also, actually, we have sexual violence um, or sexual assault uh, resources as well available um, that deaf people can access and deaf people can contact us as well um, through a contact centre. So brilliant. So CDA have good connections with other services, like you were saying. Oh, definitely. Like the, every police station in Cambridgeshire and even Peterborough and Huntingdon, a uh, few on the edges. So with speech, basically the whole Cambridgeshire area, we've got a great connection. They know of the local IDVAs, or sorry, the local IDVAs know of the deaf IDVAs in the area, and they're happy to uh, refer on. We're happy to provide them with resources, um, deaf specific resources. And if they want to interpret us, that's that's fine. It's absolutely their choice or they can use us. Brilliant. Thank you so much for explaining all of that. And I'm sure the audience are really interested in asking questions later on. So you can do that. So now we have a third guest who will be talking about Welsh Women's Aid, which is WWA. So this is a bit of a different service. So it's not like Sign Health or CDA where they have their own IDVA service. This is a bit different. The organisation has been running a while linked to Wales only, and it's a members organisation. So it means different services are providing education and support in Wales, and these are all hearing organisations. But just recently, they had a new project open up for a deaf worker who could support the community. So I would like to introduce Kate and her role is the Deaf Community Support Officer. So she's only just joined in January. So welcome. Hello, hello, thank you. Thank you so much for joining. I think we're really interested to hear from your service. It's a bit different from the previous two. Let me just get my questions ready. So about WWA, your services and your role as a domestic community officer is not the same as an IDVA, is that right? So can you explain a little bit about what your role does include? What is that covered in the project? Yeah, so my role really, so I'm not frontline. So the WWA, Women, Welsh Women's Aid, is more like an umbrella service. So we've got membership organisations that sign up to us. So really, my role is finding the gaps within these women's services and linking those organisations with the deaf community as well. We're really just trying to reduce the barriers, improve access for deaf, the deaf community in Wales. Brilliant. That's a really clear explanation of what's happening in Wales. And that's Wales only. Is that right? You don't cross the border into England or Scotland or Ireland. Is that right? No. So do you feel that the area is small or big or what's available around Wales? So as you know, with Wales, it's quite rural. So there are some areas that are quite mountainous and don't have much access. So Welsh Women's Aid is for the whole of the 
country, so North and South Wales, and we have different regions as well that we support. So has that happened? Has deaf victims been able to support, be supported by Welsh Women's Aid? Or have they been identified and do you feel like the um, services maybe haven't been able to be provided? Where are the gaps? So really the, the domestic abuse um, victims that we have um, sort of in the past haven't had the greatest access there's been gaps sort of like limits to communication, not necessarily access to interpreters. People have said who will book the interpreters, who pays for the interpreters. Some women as well might, might not feel confident in going to these services and having the initial communication with them. Brilliant. So is that what your role includes, trying to make sure that the services are improved and thinking about deaf access? Yes, definitely. We want to create the same access for hearing Welsh women. So WWA have been working around Wales to survey the deaf community. And did they sort of find that there aren't any services available or what were the results of that survey? So the survey was actually before I joined, um, just before my time there. And there was limited response, to be honest, back then, because really they didn't know how to communicate with uh, deaf domestic abuse survivors. They didn't really know how to signpost these women on. Um, yeah. Brilliant. So now the, they've been able to signpost, do you think that's improved? Oh, definitely. So well, since I've joined, I've been able to notice the gaps. I've been able to go and visit the deaf community and I identify where these gaps are, where women are experiencing domestic abuse. Some people don't even know what domestic abuse is. And some feel like it's literally physical abuse or use this physical abuse sign. They might think it's physical it's emotional, um, it's financial, and a lot of people don't realise all of this. And we've provided that education to everybody and that's helped for the survivors. Brilliant, that's really clear. So now the deaf community in Wales, are they more aware that you're in WWA or do you feel that there's not enough publicity out there that deaf community realise there are other services um, that they're able to access? So, like I said, I've just started, but I am starting to go out and reach more people, sort of north, east, central Wales as well. I'm trying to say, introduce myself, say who I am, what this project is about. And well, really, I want to improve. I want to get rid of those gaps. Um, so, for example, if the deaf community are experiencing domestic abuse... How would they contact you or who would they contact? Or is there a person that maybe notices domestic abuse happening? Who do they contact? Yes, yeah, so they would contact Sign Live. Oh, Sign Live. Yes, yeah, so Sign Live have a service called Live Free. Oh. Uh, Oh, I see. Okay, so are you saying that on Sign Live, anybody can download the app and then in the directory, there's a click button where you can click on Live Free. Is that right? Fear Free, Live Free, Live Free, Fear Free. So, and that's connected to Welsh support services. Oh, the helpline. Okay. Yes. So... You'd be communicating to the helpline through an interpreter, is that right? Yeah, so Sign Live directly connects you to an interpreter and then they will phone the service. It's, it's like, like a relay service before that we had with text type or text talk, but this is different. This is with a sign language relay. So you will have the hearing person in the contact centre on the other end asking you the questions and that will go through the interpreter and they might find out what service is best for you. Brilliant. Okay, so all these um, women's services, they'd be sending referrals and signposts. Do they know about how deaf people might be able to access their services? Mm, 
Well, that's why I'm here now. We want to increase that level of awareness and access. Not completely, I suppose. We're trying our best to engage with them. Oh, brilliant. Obviously, I know you've just joined in January. Mm -hmm. But the goal is for the WWA to have better services for the deaf community in Wales. So what would you say your main aim is? It's really got many aims, but one of the main ones is obviously like Sign Health have the IDVAS. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it, the IDVAS. So at the moment, we don't have any deaf IDVAS in Wales. So... I would love to learn from Sign Health and everything they've done and get training from them. And potentially in the future, we could expand and get more people and deaf people and a deaf specific service, really. Also, it would be nice to set up deaf groups in future, specifically focused on domestic abuse. At the moment, there's nothing like that in Wales. So it would be perfect to create those those groups. Brilliant. So that's your vision, isn't it? to work closely with Sign Health, you can provide that support. Oh, definitely. And other deaf organisations as well. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Kate, for coming in and for giving us all your answers. Brilliant. So now you might have some questions. Um, maybe if you're in Wales and you have questions or anyone else, you're welcome to send in the n any questions to this number above. So before we move on to the Q&A, remember earlier I said we have a special surprise for you to show this video clip. Again, a huge thank you to the Home Office for the funding for this. So Sign Health have been commissioned to produce by NRG Productions and we've produced a short film, maybe five or six minutes long. And the target is for domestic abuse awareness and to remind people that you are not alone. So have a look.
Can't believe we lost. I don't want dinner. I want a beer. Wow. Oh, I've got goosebumps. This is a vital short film and it seems so simple. The support is available and again, we will be uploading this film to the website as well. So if you know anybody that might benefit from watching, please do share, share across social media. It is so useful. And again, just to remind everybody, you are not alone. If you know someone who's struggling, encourage them to ask for support we have a number of domestic abuse services out there and just reach out for support if you need it so now we've received questions from the audience watching we might not be able to cover all of them but we will ask what we can so we've got chelsea here with us from sign health from, her, from the communications team who will be relaying the questions. So over to you, Chelsea. Hello, so the first question, are there any domestic abuse services that support hard of hearing or deaf people that don't use BSL? Yes, yes. So CDA have. Um, we can modulate to your communication needs, whether you're oral, you might use a bit of science supported English, SSE, we will match your communication needs. And the same, so from Sign Health, so if the person is hard of hearing, if they're oral, all the staff are BSL users, but we will bring in BSL interpreters to match the communication needs of the deaf person that needs it. Brilliant. So next question, Chelsea. So how do different... Domestic abuse services work together to share resources and signposting. So recently, um, we set up a steering group between the three of us and our different charities. And every couple of months, we share resources, training, ideas, and just network with each other. We show what uh, domestic abuse uh, charities and support and resources are out there, basically. Yeah, that's correct. Brilliant. So next question. So this is a question for Welsh Women's Aid. Do you support male victims or are there other services for that? Yeah, so that's a different service. So this is a, a specific service for Welsh women and children, but we can signpost on to the male services. Oh, very interesting. Okay, so if there was 
a domestic abuse victim or survivor, for example, who needs a safe place to stay? Do any of your organisations provide that? So within Sign Health, we don't have our own refuge or safe space, but we do signpost on. We know which organisations are about. We Some have availability, some may be local to that person, and we think, okay, that's not safe. We might look at different counties or regions or somewhere else where that person may be a lot safer. We can then contact that refuge, check they have availability. The deaf staff member will make sure that there's access there, for instance, equipment and accessibility for the deaf survivor or victim. And Emma's saying, yes, the same. We can contact refuges within our area and as well, we make sure that they're accessible for deaf uh, victims or survivors. And Kate's saying with the WWA, we're obviously that umbrella service, but we know of refuges uh, that can provide support too. Brilliant. So on to the next question. So this is for CDA. Do you offer domestic abuse workshops? Yes, we do. Um, we offer a freedom program workshop as well and groups, one-to-one -one work, a variety of things. Yes, same for Sign Health, Vicky saying. So another question for CDA. Can somebody turn up at CDA at a drop-in, for example, and talk to an IDFA? So it depends if the advisor's there, but you can contact either me or the other advisor in advance and we can try and get there. It obviously depends on the location and our availability at the time. But if not, we can just give our number and arrange to meet. Brilliant. Are there more? How can we contact for Sign Health for referral? So, as I mentioned earlier, there's different ways for, for referral. You can self-refer, refer from a professional, or get your family or friends. So that's online, Monday to Friday, at 9 to 5. It unfortunately shut at weekends and on bank holidays. The number is on our website. And you can contact us that way as well. We provide uh, Zoom, WhatsApp, remote calls. Um, we can provide assessments remotely as well. We can double check um, if you need somebody then provided face to face. Brilliant. Is there more? So again, another question back for CDA. How would somebody be able to access this Freedom Programme? Can you explain a bit more about this? Sorry, if you contact CDA, we can put you on the list and then that way we can contact you when we've got a workshop coming up or if you wanted it uh, sort of remotely or face to face, we can let you know what dates we've got. Usually it's in the group format or one to one. Is there more questions, Chelsea? Yes, yeah, so if a survivor or a victim is based in Cambridgeshire, would they go to Sign Health or CDA? Well, it's really up to that person. It's up to you. You can choose. We're not saying you have to come to us at CDA or you have to go to Sign Health. If you want to go to them, that's fine. Vicky's saying, obviously, it can be a dependent on case-by-case -case basis. If somebody refers in, we might refer to CDA anyway, depending on their local area, and then we might hand over to CDA. Same with CDA. They might think, okay, this is outside our remit, and pass on to Sign Health. Obviously, it's not just Cambridgeshire that Sign Health cover as well. Brilliant. So what advice would you give someone who's not sure about if they're in a domestic abuse situation? What advice have you got? Well, Sign Health on the website, we've got a variety of resources and videos in BSL. And so if you're not sure... Um, uh what is abuse? I mean, it covers so many different things, physical, emotional, psychological, sexual, um, coercive control. You can think, oh, OK, let's watch these videos and think, actually, is, is this somebody I know? And then your family or friend could contact us or these other services from CDA or Women's, Welsh Women's Aid. OK, so another one. How do I know when I should contact your services if I'm not in an awful situation, but sometimes I need to talk to someone about my relationship? 
Yes, so you can contact uh, CDA through our website and our number's on there. We can have a chat remotely or face-to-face if needed. You can share sort of your concerns. We don't have to say things are wrong or right. You can just have a chat with us. Yeah. Okay, so again, from your experience, which abuse is the most common? Ooh. <laughs> Well, Vicky say most common, I suppose, oh, I don't know if popular is the right word, but coercive control. People don't realise that this has happened to me. I've been under coercive control. I've had to hide a lot of things. I've, you know, it's not just physical. People think f- abuse is physical and actually a lot of it is other ways. And then they think, hang on a minute, I've been through abuse myself. Um, so I think, yeah, coercive control is, is obviously quite well. Um, financial control is a big one. And okay, so when you mentioned coercive control, do you have an example from Sign Health? Yes, so we have BSL video on our website, uh, one or two videos that talk about coercive control and show you what, what is it, what does that mean? Okay, so we've got time for two more questions from Chelsea. How many staff do you have in each of your domestic abuse services? So Emma's saying two within CDA, the two IDVAs. Uh, Vicky's saying, well, sign health is big. Uh, Being able to expand massively within England. I think we have somebody within each region. So North West, North East, South East, South West, West Midlands, London, Kent, Bristol even. We've, it, it's based off the different pots of funding we've got, basically. So I think we have 25 members of staff within our team. And Kate saying, wow, oh, that's hard to say, really, because for the women's services, all these different organisations, I don't know how many each of those organisations have. But within Welsh Women's Aid, whew, oh, 12, potentially. I'm, I'm not sure. Wow, that's a good number. But Kate saying, I don't know. Obviously, it depends on the, the split across the physical region of Wales. So we'll have the last question, please, Chelsea. Oh, I've got three more, really. So thinking about technology, do you feel that that makes abuse more common or widespread? Sorry, could you just repeat that, Chelsea? Yes, do you think technology has made abuse more widespread? Mm, Yeah, Kate's nodding, saying yes. I think it's a lot easier to abuse people like online on the computer texting you can bully a lot easier without being there in person you can financially abuse someone via their bank online it's it's really simple to sort of just i think it, technology has made it worse yes Vicky saying, oh, yes, well, technology abuse or technological abuse actually is a hot topic at the moment. A lot of people have been using that you know like on social media or messaging And even like at home, they don't realise, like a ring doorbell, say, you know, there could be people in the background downloading your data and seeing what you're getting onto, getting at to at home, same gaming, downloading your your use. And I don't know, it's it's a huge area, really, isn't it? That's only just getting started. Yeah, Yeah, Kate agrees. Yeah, but I think technological abuse is is a form of two. So what happens if the funding stops? Oh, (laughs) that's a very good question, Vicky says. Well, personally, I feel it shouldn't stop. The Home Office, you know, should be thinking about this as a priority. Like you say, technological abuse Mm -hmm. is still very high. As Emma's saying, like, if the funding stopped, how how would deaf people... It's just not fair. Like, hearing uh, domestic abuse uh, victims will get support, but deaf people won't. So That's not fair. And Kate's saying, yeah, we need to think of a different way, potentially a different avenue of getting funding. And Vicky's saying, we're just going to have to campaign. Yeah, definitely. You know, councils, police, housing support. We need to show that there's a lot of def- um, domestic abuse victims. And without us, they wouldn't get support. Where would they go? They wouldn't become survivors. OK, so on to the last question now. What do I do if I think my friend is in an abusive relationship? So, Vicky's saying they can contact our project, our service at Sign Health. 
and one of our team members can advise, we can sign both. Because I know it can be difficult, you know, like there may be a friend who's gone through domestic abuse, but it could be somebody from their family. And we're saying, true, like if you're worried about a friend, you can get the friend to contact us or you can contact us. But really, we would advise you to talk to the friend anyway. But we are here to support that friend. If they're frightened, don't worry. We're a confidential service. We're trained to keep everything confidential and to provide support. And Kate's saying it's the same with the WWA, even with sort of sign live, uh, live chat, web chats. We've got so many different ways of accessing us. And just to say we're there for you. Brilliant. Thank you all so much for all of your contributions today. And the questions have been really great. So hopefully the audience watching have been really intrigued by what you've got to say. So thank you. It's been brilliant. So today's program has been great. And it's, you know, so appreciate, appreciative for all of you coming and sharing this information. It's so important. It's important for the audience and for us to know we have options available. Maybe if you know other people that might be in this situation, share this information with them. So again, thank you all, the audience, for sending in your questions. And I would like to say a huge appreciation for everybody who's been involved in this event, in creating these live streams throughout all three episodes and the support of everybody working here, everybody contributing has been so valuable. So a big thank you. So just again, to summarize what has been spoken about in each episode, the first one we heard from three domestic abuse survivors who had talked through their experiences. It was a very moving show. We then went on to talk about emergency services so if you haven't yet downloaded the BSL 999 app, please do. You never know when you'll need it. And if you're not sure how, you can ask your friends or professionals who can help you. So again, that BSL 999 app can get through to the police services, but you can also use text 999. So you'll have to register text 999 with the word register and follow those instructions. We also spoke to Refuge Charity, who spoke through their different services and different options around housing. And they have safe houses all around the UK. So if you are feeling like you're in an abusive situation, you can self-refer to domestic abuse services out there. If you are feeling like you've been affected by the information that we've spoken about today, please do contact us for more support. Or if you'd like to talk to someone one-to-one, -one, have a look on the Sign Health website and we can provide you with that emotional support. At the end, we will provide with you the website address and a QR code will pop up as well. So if you're able to scan that on your code, it will take you directly to the website. So this live stream programs have all been recorded. So if you would like to store it and be able to watch it again, they will all be available on the website. They're also on Sign Health social media as a live recording and you should be able to con uh, access that direct on the website as well. So you can show other people if you feel it's necessary. And so we will love to hear your thoughts and your feedback about this mini series. Please do let us know what you think. Either comment, share it, let us know what you thought. If you thought the information was really, really interesting or you'd like to know more, please do share those, share those thoughts with us. So again, remember to ask for support if you need it. We are coming to an end of the episode, so thank you so much. The Sign Health website will appear on the end screen. So if you are feeling that somebody might need support or if you're feeling that you do, please do encourage them to ask for it and ask for it yourself. And just remember, you are not alone. So keep an eye on each other and support each other. Good night.